I've been called an introspective person. Well, I am an introspective person, I think. So, what does that mean, introspective? Well, the word or, or me. Oh, well, of course, me. People can just Google the word. Um, well, basically, I, um, I reflect and self-examine a lot. I think I, well, I think a lot, and then I have lots of conversations with myself, and yeah, I think a lot. <laughs> so, where do you do that? Um, well, I sort of believe that um, life is about working on yourself, you know, like, you should um, continue to think about what you have done, whether it's right, what can be better, um, yeah, basically... I, I think, I believe in working on myself. And what do you think influenced you to be that way? Well, being a musician for sure, because I mean, our whole life is about being critical. You know, I, um, I think being a musician made me um, grow up with a lot of alone time. Um, you know, either having left home very young or in the practice room because you're always just by yourself. So there's a lot of time to think about um, what you do. And our job is to be critical and constantly try to evolve, improve. And so I think it's almost natural to turn into someone like this. <laughs> so tell us what's happening this weekend. Um, so I'm gonna play. I'm gonna, I don't know for who, but <laughs> I'm gonna play. Um, basically, so I, I decided to do this thing where every Saturday and Sunday, if it's sunny, um, I would perform a piece that I would prepare leading up to that, you know, however it takes to get to performance ready. So obviously I'm not just like, oh, Saturday, I'm like, oh, it's sunny, and I suddenly come up with something. You know, we work up to that point of performing. And why are you doing that? Well, um... Well, for myself, it's, um, you know, since the pandemic started, we have lost a, maybe a sense of purpose in the practice. And I don't mean like life purpose, just as in, you know, like we continue to practice things, but then we don't have a deadline that will make us do the home stretch, you know, the, the difficult home stretch. Because, you know, I always tell my students that, um, you can learn a piece and then after like 98% of the work to learn a piece, the last 2% might take as long as the 98%. So um, so maybe it's not 2%, so maybe the math is all wrong. But um, basically like I'm, um, you know, I gave myself a break in the pandemic. I think part of it made me realize how tired maybe I was sometimes to go from concert to concert and then constantly have that um, hard deadline and then sometimes maybe don't feel so good about what I've done so in the beginning I gave myself a break and then now after a year and um, I'm sure lots of people are feeling this that we maybe forget part of it you know I, I, I teach and I tell my stu students about this home stretch but do I know what this is <laughs> anymore so that's what it is for myself and there are many other reasons to do this because I would like to reach the local community. Um, I would like to know if people still want to hear music. Um, but mostly just for myself. So if nobody shows up, if it's sunny, I'll play. These are the scales, as uh, probably most people know what scales are, but they're actually my own scales. So I've um, 
I kind of, you know, throughout the years, I've invented um, an exercise that I begin each day that makes me feel like a, it keeps my technique um, organized in a very complete way. Well, I mean, I'm still improving on it, but that's what I what I use so far. I mean, I know this will hit a sort spot, but like keep organized and keep up for what? For when I have to play concerts again? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know when that is, but um, hopefully there will be light at the end of this tunnel at some point. I mean, um, it's almost, almost been a year, but you know, like playing is, is like this. Like if you don't play for a day, then you regress and your muscles also forget what, you know, the accuracy and everything. Just if you're not active, like you lose it right away. And I don't know, I, maybe I'm just like hopeful that any day is the day. And how's all that, that upkeep and maintenance going? Well, I, I, I think I sound pretty good. <laughs> So, well, you know, I have a method and then I, you know, I, I think I've always had a pretty good discipline about practicing and um, practice hours every day. And so I think I sound good, um, but I mean, just to show you, like, <laughs> I think what I maybe lack sometimes is will. <laughs> and I feel like maybe my shifting and my, my vibrato, a lot of things are directly linked to my will. So, for example, you know, I can play this. <laughs> But sometimes I'll play like this. <laughs> you can see the clear difference. <laughs> yeah. One is a uh, you know like like I'm practicing. The other one is like you don't feel like practicing. <laughs> one is playing the music, and the other one's playing the notes. That's right. Yeah. The other one is um, upkeeping, and um, the good one is being a violinist, maybe. <laughs> weekend? One of them. Well, if I get through the other one. <laughs> so um, what piece is this? It's the Bach uh, fugue. It's one of the three fugues that he wrote and um, from the G minor. So why this piece? Well, this piece is very hard. It's a little bit of a, a mountain to climb. But at the same time, I, I played this the first time when I was like maybe 12 and 13 and then played again much later. But basically, every time I come back to it, I try to improve it and I haven't come back to improve it for about maybe 10 years. <laughs> so I'm just thinking that I would pick something that I maybe don't necessarily want to face. You know, it's not like back then I didn't play well, but I think my technique has grown a lot and I just have not updated how I play this piece. And I often find that out when I teach. I teach this piece a lot, so I was thinking um, I should do something to push myself. So that's why I picked it. It's hard. Short answer is it's hard. <laughs> So what, I have to hold the violin for the next 18 hours <laughs> just because I have to play? Well, you know, life happens around concerts. I have to eat and sleep and and I have another life here <laughs> where I'm a Viking and I have to eat and sleep in there. Um, yeah, so right now I'm trying to figure out where to put my bed next to the fire so I could go to sleep in the game. And I'm going to go to sleep 
in real life too later and tomorrow when I get up I play a concert <laughs> <laughs> in the video game I don't play the violin <laughs> I'm just a Viking you know there's no violin back then um, well the pieces are fine um, but we'll find out if it rains or not it's the first weekend and sort of just let fate decide because I've practiced up to this and we'll see if if, um, if fate lets me play
Okay. How did it go today? I think I played much better than yesterday. Um, it was also maybe about eight degrees warmer. There was a lot of sun, and, and it's the second show. So I think I played much better. Um, I mean, it's a different piece, so so you kind of can't really compare anyway. So, but <laughs> yesterday um, we had a neighbor family that came came to see it, and today nobody came. And what was that? Uh, what was that like? Playing for nobody. Well, you know what? That was my plan. Don't call me pessimistic, because um, I was right. Um, so I, I actually wanted to do it. I mean, partially to motivate myself to put together performances, but at the same time, maybe it's more about documentation. You know, of course, you can tell that maybe I'm a little disappointed that nobody showed up, but I have to remember it's about documentation. And so you, you described this feeling, not just from today's event, but from a lot of the things that you've been working on over the pandemic, is being inside of a tunnel. Um, can you tell us about that? So part of it is that all of our concerts are canceled. Um, for someone like me, who really primarily only performed, like that's all my work. Um, fortunately, maybe a, a handful of organizations that paid partial of our fee and there were um, also a handful of organizations that and this is since last March that we recorded and streamed our concerts the work and finances aside we don't know where people are that listen to concerts or maybe like music or but basically like every concert that we have played whether it's streamed or outdoor, there's just this emptiness, like there's nobody. Like at most I've seen an event stream to 30 people, 30 people. I mean, imagine how many concerts were happening before the pandemic, like in every city, every weekend, filling concert halls and, you know, and, and I don't know, like, I don't know if it's um, the pandemic, it's been hard for people to sit down for music or financially hard for people to pay. I mean, we, we weren't charging people today. Or maybe whatever state people are in. You know, can you really say that there's anyone that went through the pandemic with zero music this whole time? Probably not. But we don't know where the people are that consume concerts. So uh, for those people that you're trying to reach out to for today's concert, uh, what did you do to try to put the word out there? Well, from um, a little collection from our first concert and some of the people we've met, uh, first concert out here, and um, we have a modest mailing list of maybe 30, 40 people locally. Um, so we let them know that every sunny weekend, like Saturday and Sunday, um, I would prepare something to play for five to 10 minutes, mostly around five minutes. So. Um, there's our mailing list, and um, a friend of mine, a generous musician and pastor in the area, he sent um, my my email out to people that he knows, and so from from what we can see, it reached more than 250 people just from him. Um, so that's about I would say 300, and then I mean you literally <laughs> went and knocked on people's doors 30 minutes before the show with people that are home. Um, just around here to see if they wanted to come up to listen for five minutes and nobody. <laughs> so with all that in mind and putting the word out there in all the different ways that you can and having results like this, do you think you'll do this again? Yeah, I'll do it again because it's about documentation. You know, um, I'm not doing this because I I want to gather a big group of people to listen to me play each week. I mean, of course, it'd be great if people listen. And and, and to be honest, like, musicians, we're, we're not all people that are, like, oh, dying to share music with people and then find, find ourselves, like, um, purpose just by playing for people and sharing music with people. I mean, there, there are people that feel that way. And then, of course, it's great to share music with people, but musician 
is a profession. You know, we provide. I wouldn't call it exactly service, but we have skills that we、um, that we work for money with. You know, <laughs> I don't I don't know that the grammar just got so weird, but I mean, it's easy for everyone to say they like music. I mean, excuse my pessimism, but I would love to document how people don't care about music and don't care about musicians. You know how we are suffering from the pandemic. Every day, I'm receiving emails and alerts. You know, even from like Yelp, all the time. Support local restaurants. Restaurants are suffering. You know, like give them business. I I don't know what people think we're supposed to do, musicians. Maybe we're just not supposed to have business. People just kind of have this、um, idea about I don't know, hungry artists or something. But we we are a big part of the society. Maybe before the pandemic, and we have work. We Make money for offering our skills, but right now it's just like we don't know how we can scream to the world. But we're just in this tunnel that nobody's listening. Nobody will listen for free, for money, for long, short, outdoor, indoor, at home, anything streamed, nothing. So is that kind of what this vlog is about?、Um, is bringing awareness to the fact that music is such a pervasive part of most people's lives, but there are in fact people behind that music that are really suffering.、Right、now. I think that's the disconnection. Yes, I mean that's the disconnection that I I feel that people don't realize is that people might all love music, but、um, people probably don't care about artists. That actually make music. So yeah, so that's what I'm trying to do here. So yeah. So is there anything positive coming out of what happened today,、um, or what you've been feeling in general? Well, today I I think I gave a pretty cool performance of this piece. I I learned、um, the piece is called Louisiana Blue Strut, a Cake Walk. It's by Coleridge Taylor Perkinson. And he's an African American composer、um, from the late 1900s to early 2000s, and it's sort of like my little effort in celebrating Black History Month. And、um, I learned this piece, and it's difficult. It's weeks in the making, and、uh, play from memory. I mean, I I enjoy this challenge, and I enjoy. Giving a little bit in—it's very small, but maybe it's a giving gesture to to something I want to support. So that's something that's that I felt positive about, and and I think the music is great. So yeah.